What's going on guys? Linus here. Welcome to a little commentary on uh, Defiance. That's just the name of the game. It's just Defiance. I want to say a subtitle, but there is none. So, um, anyway, this is the, um, Liberate the Lost co-op mission. This is like one of the first co-op missions in the game. The, the only one that I can play, uh, for right now. Maybe if I do more questing, I can, uh, do some more. Um, but it's basically the same as in a lot of other, other MMOs. Where it's just you and a few other people up against a bunch of monsters. There's a few bosses in between there. And you have a pretty good chance of getting, you know, some pretty sweet loot. And then if you complete it, you do well. You get more rewards. Um, so like I said, this is the first one. It's all pretty straightforward, pretty easy. It's basically one corridor. Um, and you get, you know, if you complete, you get pretty sweet rewards. Some good experience. So you can basically go through the game uh, with some friends if you want to. And not do the actual quests. You can just... Uh, play the um, the co-op missions, and that's uh, what I've been doing for a little bit. I've mostly been playing PvP and the co-op mission. Um, I still have to do a lot more questing, but I'm like rank 250 now, and uh, I have a lot of better weapons now from when I when I played this. This was, I think, yesterday, or may have been this morning. I don't know. I've been playing this game a lot, so I don't really know uh, when I play what, but it's, it hasn't been that long. Um, I just wanted to show this game to you guys because I've been playing it on Steam. I've played it for... I think over 16 hours in the past three days and a lot of people have been asking me like what's this game why are you playing it should I get it um, and I get it because it's you know it's a new MMO and people are always a little you know careful when, when a new MMO comes out they're not really sure if they want to invest the money because uh, it is I think 50 or 60 bucks and it's 40 50 euros uh, to get it on Steam there is ways to get it like a little bit cheaper but then you won't have like the Steam integration and you will miss out on some like pre-order bonuses um, so, honestly, if, if, it, if you're asking me, I'd say just get it on Steam, if you're gonna get it, but, um, yeah, this is just with a, a group of random people, there's matchmaking in the game, if you are playing, you can just press control, a little menu will pop up, and it will say, uh, what do you want to do, you pick matchmaking, and you can go co-op missions, and you can just say quick match, um, or you can select a specific thing you want to do. But for me, it doesn't really matter, because the only one I have right now is this one. Um, and it's really, it's just a pretty long corridor, corridor. I cannot really say that we're, well, that's stupid. Long hallway, let's just keep it at that. Uh, and then there's, you know, a bunch of monsters. There's turrets, as you just saw me shoot, and you have to disable certain things and enable certain things. There's like, you know, some, some of the soldiers on your side have been kidnapped by the evil mutants, and it's up to you to save them. And uh, that's pretty much what I did. There may be some lag in the recording. I'm not really sure. I'm watching it back right now and I see some lag. Uh, that could be due to my um, external hard drive or it could be at the actual file. So if the, the video looks fine to you, then don't worry about it. And it's just me and my stupid hard drive. Um, but basically you do matchmaking. You join up with a bunch of random people. As you can see, I'm playing with three other people. Uh, for what I know so far, the options for playing with other people are actually... Uh, pretty okay. You can do a lot of quests with other people, just random people. You don't have, even have to group up. If you're in the same area, you just sort of work together. Uh, you can revive each other. You can do the same objective. And it just feels really, um, just, you know, easy. Like, there's not a lot of effort that you need to put into it. And uh, I actually quite like that. And then for the, the co-op missions, it's always four people as far as I know. Uh, there's also PvP, like I said before, there is, um, if you want to do, like, you know, just Team Deathmatch, it's, uh, 6v6 or 8v8, which is actually a pretty good amount of people, like, I don't like, um, playing Team Deathmatch on small maps with a lot of people, so 8v8 or 6v6 is pretty much perfect for me, um, you know, like, it's not, you know, crowded or anything, uh, and then there's another game type, which is sort of like Domination in Call of Duty, where you have, you know, a couple flags and you have to take them. Um, I mean, you have that in a lot of shooters, but I'm assuming that most people know what I mean when I say domination from uh, Call of Duty. Uh, but you have to take over the flags, you get points for doing that, and, you know, by the end of the round, you get, like, some pretty sweet rewards. And especially if you do well and you win the game, you get even better stuff. Um, so it works pretty well. I, I actually kind of like it. But that's, uh, I think, 48 people versus 48 people. So they're actually pretty big battles. It's a pretty huge map you do on that game type. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with the game. I mean, I was, you know, just as hesitant when the game came out, like a lot of people are right now. I uh, wasn't sure whether I should get it. At first, I pre-ordered, like, a, the cheapest edition. And then later, I decided I actually really liked the game from what I, what I saw of it. And I just figured I'd go for the digital deluxe edition. 
uh, which gets you like some extra weapons, some titles, stuff like that. It's not actually worth it. It's just nice to get like you get an experience boost for like 30 days. Um, you find extra money for 30 days. You get a bunch of titles. You get some extra vehicles, which are like the fastest vehicles in the game, which is actually quite ridiculous that you have to pay real money for it. But uh, that's pretty much the only thing that's actually you know that people have to pay real money for. There is microtransactions in the game and let me just explain that right now there's this thing called a lockbox in pretty much every town and if you want to open it you have to pay some key codes which uh, you get by clearing dungeons by doing quests uh, stuff like that by pvping as well and um and you also have to pay a little bit of in-game money which you get from quests and well pretty much the same thing i just said from just killing enemies and doing quests um, you can buy those lockboxes if you pay real money. It's not a lot of money, and they're not. It doesn't really give you an advantage over other people. Um, if I do like one co-op mission, I can almost get like a um, a lockbox, and that's you know you have to pay almost five euros for that. So it's not worth it. I have never seen anybody actually use the microtransactions in games like these, like in you know War Z as well. Uh, there's just really no point to it, and especially in this game. If you open a lockbox, what it does, it gives you two, three, or four random items, depending on how much, uh, how, like, what tier the lockbox is. So if you get tier two, you have to pay, like, six euros, uh, like, real-life money, I believe. Um, and then if you want, like, a tier three, where you get three items, uh, you do get some better stuff, but it's a lot more expensive with uh, real-life money, also in-game. Um, I actually saved up and got myself a tier three, which is, like, I think, 24 key codes, so you would have to do about five or six co-op missions for that or like the big um pvp rounds so they're actually quite expensive but the uh the reward is pretty great so you can get new weapons by just questing or you know getting lucky in co-op missions or you can get the lock boxes and just uh, get stuff that way i actually did find a lot of stuff in co-op which was pretty sweet because normally um when questing you don't fight that much but when you do like the big story quests, you do get like all sorts of new weapons. Uh, you get weapon mods, which you can use to enhance your weapons. It's actually pretty fun. It's a pretty simple system, but it just works quite well. The only thing that I've found quite lacking about this game so far is the uh, the chat system. It's the, the blue bar in the bottom right corner of the screen. And it's only one line of chat that's shown at all times. So it's really easy to miss chats that other people, you know, place. Uh, there is groups that you can be in. I'm in a group right now. I always go into a group with Ray when I, when we play the game. Uh, we have our own clan. So if you actually have defiance and you're interested in joining our clan, we only have three people right now, including me and Ray. So we just invited one random dude to the clan and he joined. Uh, we're still looking for other people that want to play the game with us. So, you know, feel free to let me know if you actually have the game, if you play on the Europe server. Um, give me your name. I'll, you know, shoot you an invite and we'll have fun together. That's uh, what I'm planning on doing. Um, but like I said, I've just been, uh, when the game just came out, I've just been questing a lot, doing story quests and side quests and things of that nature. And then uh, later on, uh, Ray actually asked me about PvP and I figured, okay, let's try playing PvP. And it's actually really fun. It's uh, Team Deathmatch, like I said earlier, and Domination. And it's basically a third-person shooter and you get to use the weapons you find in online and uh, the PvE stuff, so if you, you know, get really great weapon, you can just test it out in PvP. And, you know, there's, there might be small problems there with people finding really overpowered weapons. Um, but the worst that there is right now is, I think, like, the LMGs that, like, really great LMGs, like Purple, which is basically epic quality. Um, they do tons of damage from pretty much any distance. Um, but they're still patching the game, they're working on lots of patches, there's DLC coming out, and, like, pretty long time I hope uh, there is a season pass I my advice would be to hold off on that until you know what the DLC will be because uh, it is an MMO and it's just weird that there's a season pass and in my opinion that's a mistake introducing that to the game um, you know especially on launch when people are also you know very hesitant they don't know if they want to get the game and they see this extra purchase for like 30 or 20 euros and you know it'll, it'll probably hold them off for a little bit um, that's what I how I felt about the whole season pass thing. I just don't like it I don't know why there has to be season passes for everything. It just feels a little ridiculous um, Anyway, I've been talking about the the game in general um, What you're seeing in here is we just rescued a bunch of Marines or soldiers or whatever 
Um, and we found out that the mutants are druggies. They use ad Adreno or Adreno, which is basically a drug that makes them extra strong. So we're sabotaging their supply. And then if you run into the final boss, you'll actually see that he does use that drug. Drug? Drug? Um, so it's, you know, it's actually quite nice that they added a little story to the co-op missions. It's not just go in here, shoot people. There is, you know, a little bit of a story. It's not a big deal. It just makes it a little bit nicer, you know, the way they do it in other games. I mean, I've played a lot of uh, World of Warcraft. Um, there's always, like, little, nice little stories to the, um... To the dungeons, and that just adds something to it, because it, it's not as much fun when you just go in into an area and it's like, oh, shoot people, and that is it. Um, you kind of need, you know, something more than that, and that's what they added in this game, and it's pretty sweet. Um, as for the bugs, I know, um, what's his face? Total Biscuit uploaded a video, talked about this. The AI was supposed to be extremely terrible. Um, that's mostly for the beginning of the game, actually. They are terrible. They don't aim for you. They don't really do a lot. Um, but when you get further into the game, they get way better aim. They actually come for you pretty fast. Um, you know, people like like riflemen will keep their distance, and then people that actually are melee characters or shotgunners will get close to you, and it just works the way it's supposed to work. Um, and especially later on into the game, like the higher your rank is, the more difficult the AI will become. Um, so it's not that buggy in my opinion. There is still one bug, that is the voice chat. If you're in a group, uh, voice chat is automatically enabled, even if you have voice set to off, it's very annoying. Uh, you can solve it by just muting the group and muting the individual people in it. That's how we've been solving it. Uh, but they're working on a patch right now. They set this on the official forums. It's not supposed to work that way. And I actually, you know, I have a feeling that this might actually turn out to be a lot better than it is right now, even. Um, I've been having a ton of fun with it. I, there's not really too many things that are terrible about it. And it's just fun. Um, so if they patch it up even more, it'll get even better for me. Uh, I think this was the second time I did this mission. So I opened all, like, optional doors where you get, like, other monsters you don't have to kill. Um, it's just, you know, you get some ag nice extra loot and you get some extra experience for killing those guys. So it does pay off if you do that. Uh, also, I want to add, if anyone has any questions about this game, then, you know, feel free to ask me. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, either on YouTube or on Steam. Um, YouTube would be preferable so that other people can see your question and, you know, take that information in as well. Uh, but if you want to shoot me a question on Steam, that's fine too. A lot of people have been asking me about the game. Since I started playing it, I had like 20 people asking me, is this game worth it? Should I get it? And I could see a lot of people are actually on the fence with this. And, um, I feel the same way, you know, with MMOs, you always got to be careful because they might collapse really, really fast and just turn out to be terrible in general. Um... You know, I got Guild Wars 2 when it came out, and then I just stopped playing it. I'm not saying it's a terrible game, by the way, if that's what you're thinking. Um, it just wasn't my type of game, and that's something you got to find out with every MMO that comes out. You just got to play it for a bit, and uh, see if you're going to like it, or watch some gameplay, you know, stuff like that. When I watched Defiance at first, I watched um, Eat My Diction stream it, and I thought, what the hell is this game? This looks ridiculous. I will never get this. And then I watched some actual, you know, gameplay, sort of focusing on the game a little bit more. Uh, in other streams and gameplay videos, and it turned out that it looked like a lot of fun to me. And I started playing it, and it is a ton of fun. Um, another thing I want to add is that it's made by the same people that made Rift, Tryon Worlds. Um, and they have basically the same thing in this game. They've got these giant dynamic world events where, um, basically a portal to hell will open. It's not actually that in this game. Um, there's like, you know, bugs or mutants that come out of the ground and stuff like that, or they drop in. Um, and it's this giant event where you have to team up with like tens if not hundreds of other people I've actually had events where there were like 200 people and You have to just help each other out revive each other and you know stuff like that heal each other There's healing guns as well um, And then you know defeat all the enemies and then towards the end you get like a really sweet reward It will take it can take a long while I've had arc falls that took me that's the name by the way They're called arc falls and that took me like 15 minutes and then I've had arc falls that took me like an hour to complete but then towards the end of it, you get like a shitload of experience, you get some pretty good loot. And you just meet some new people to play with, and it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, so that's, you know, that's another reason that you might like the game. It's got this dynamic questing system that it's actually pretty great. Uh, this is towards the end of the dungeon, or co-op mission. Um, you end up on this door, and everybody in your group has to stand at the door. So you can pass through it and, you know, go to the final boss. But this guy had his own idea, and he opened this, an optional door all by himself, and we had to help him kill these enemies. 
Normally, I would say that the player base is not very cooperative in these things. Um, sometimes you're lying on the ground dying and someone has to revive you and they just walk past you. They don't give a crap. Um, that's the downside to this being a third-person shooter. It's a lot of dumb idiots are attracted to this. Um, the game tells you a lot of hints, especially in like Arcfall events. Like a crystal drops down and it's got this armor around it so you can't do a lot of damage. There's all these little bugs crawling around as well. And what the game tells you is let the bugs live, let them bite the crystal, and then like a little spot pops up, you can do some extra damage to it. But every player shoots the bugs. You don't get any experience for it. You barely get any loot. They just shoot the tiny bugs. And I just don't get it. It's a shooter. I get it. But why do you have to be so dumb? I hate you people so much. Anyway, that's what happens in this game. A lot of people do not revive you, do not talk in chat, or they just think it's a single player shooter that you play with other people. And it's not, it's an MMO. You should play it like an MMO. So if you want to play it, get a group together, you know, join me and Ray. And um, it could be a lot of fun. But anyway, this is the, the final boss of this dungeon. His name is Piercer, or he is a Piercer. Um, he basically stabs people with a giant needle, takes their adrenaline. And then uh, over here you can see he uses the gas and it will revive him back to full health. And you have to do that, I think, three times. And then the um, the third time you kill him, he actually dies pretty easily. Um, also for skills, I did not explain that yet. There's a total of four skills. There's overcharge or overload, I don't know what it's called, which is what I'm using. Does extra damage for a period of time. There's cloak, which makes you invisible for 15 seconds. There's Blur, which makes you run really fast and hit extra hard with melee attacks. And there's Decoy, which lets you make a copy of yourself and then, you know, mobs will aggro it and um, you have some time to shoot uh, or escape, whichever you want to do. And it works out really well. There's this giant upgrade system, which I can't show you right now. It's not in this video. Um, but, you know, if you want to know more about the game, then ask me and I'll show you. Uh, you also see that I just ranked up an assault rifle, so the more you use a weapon, um, the higher your proficiency or rank will get, it's basically the same as in the first Borderlands. So if you use one type of weapon a lot, whether that be pump shotguns or sniper rifles, uh, submachine guns, whatever, um, your rank will increase and your reload time will get will go down by like once one percent. You know, it's just little stuff like that, but it does um, add something to work towards into this game. So if you want to use, I've been using a lot of pump shotguns and I love those. Um, so you get like, you know, uh, less recoil, a little bit extra damage, and it's just small stuff that just makes it more of an MMO than a shooter, uh, which I absolutely love, by the way. Uh, that guy, I think, was trying to help me out, and then I got shot, or he got shot, I mean, had to revive myself. You can revive yourself, but only once, like every 30 minutes or something like that, or 20 minutes, I don't know what it is. Um, but you have this little meter, and it fills up if you kill enemies or do damage, or stuff like that. Uh, and then you can recharge yourself again, uh, revive yourself again is what I mean. So I revived myself, helped the guy out, and then we killed the boss. And that is pretty much the end of it. And then towards the end, it just, like, you know, you did it. Here's your reward. I got five key codes, 750 experience, 500 in-game money. And you will see that I ended up number one on the scoreboard, which is pretty sweet. You can sort of see the competitive nature of even the co-op missions. There's pretty much uh, scoreboards for everything. And uh, that's the end of it. It was pretty short. I had done it before, so I was able to do it a little bit faster. And you get transported back to town. So that is pretty much the end of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little commentary. And like I said, if you have any questions or want to join us, then let me know. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you later.